Hello drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumstheword.com and welcome to this free beginner full song lesson for my uh, online members as well as you guys here on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to teach this song today, it's been a popular choice um, uh, for many years now. It, the song is You Get What You Give by the New Radicals, drummed by Gary Ferguson and as usual I've got the full drum chart for you to download. Uh, from our website for free. You can find all three pages of the notation. Have these printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It's gonna make things a lot easier for you to understand. Uh, and uh, like I said, this, this is a beginner song, but apart from a couple of drum fills sections um, uh, that, that sort of move it to more the intermediate level, um, it really is a, a beginner lesson. And it'd be a shame if a new drummer was intimidated playing onto this song just because of a couple of sections. Um, we can always talk about, and I will talk about in this lesson, how we can sort of simplify parts if you can't play what's actually being played. You can always simplify things with drums. It's one of the great things about this, this, uh, this instrument. So, 114 BPM, sort of medium tempo song this. Uh, we've got one basic drum beat throughout the entire song, and it's this. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom. And that's it. Pretty much the entire song, apart from a couple of sections, like I say, and some bass drum variations, that is pretty much the entire song. So um, the other thing I want to mention is the, is the hi-hat. It's sort of loose, half loose all the way through the song. It's not fully closed as I'm playing it here. It's sort of in between, it's sort of this, but it's not quite that. This hi-hat doesn't allow me to go for the minuscule amount of looseness that I want. Uh, unlike an, a, an actual acoustic hi-hat. So um, just play around with it. Don't have it fully open. Because towards the end of the song, that's when it fully opens and you really hear the difference. But just be aware that throughout the majority of the song, the hi-hat is being played around with quite a bit by Gary. He's sort of um, playing it slightly open in one section, slightly more closed in other sections. That's for the more intermediate drummer. Don't worry too much about that. You can just play like I'm doing with the hi-hat closed for these sections. So we get four bars of that drum groove at the beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And don't improvise too much. Uh, and then we go to the second line where we get six bars of that groove being played again. But we come in with this drum fill at the end of that line on the sixth bar with flams. Flams on the snare drum. One and two and three and four. And one, and it rolls into beat one of the next bar. One, two, three, four, one. Black boom, black boom, black boom, black boom, boom. Don't worry if you if you don't know how to play a flam or you never played a flam before. Perhaps if you wanted to instead, you could just play the floor tom and snare drum together. That's that's another good way to sort of replicate it. it sort of gives those snare drum notes a bit more power. The flam allows you to give the uh, the one drum power but if you wanted to play between two drums instead and not worry about the actual flam mechanism then you could play and that'll work just as well for the song so we get this the last two bars for example one two three four one two three four one then we're into the next section bridge one which is just four more bars of the groove, but it ends with uh, the last bar of that line, one, two, three, four, and. And we get a more obvious open hi-hat there on four, and. So we get double snare drum there, four, and also the and of four with the open hi-hat, four, and, one, where it, the hi-hat becomes more closed in the next section. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. So as always, I recommend you sort of create a two bar loop. So you don't just play the one bar on its own because that sort of gets stuck in your head. You play it with, in context with the sections around it. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and one. So before we go on, let me now play for you the second line of the intro and the whole of bridge one so we can hear those two sections played next to each other without me talking over the top. Here we go. So 
So for verse one, we've got eight bars of the groove, started with that crash symbol on beat one. By the way, the little plus sign above beat one of that first bar is just to indicate the hi-hat is closing again after those two open hi-hats. The O's represent the opens, the pluses represent where the hi-hat closes with your foot. Again, as a beginner, perhaps you just want to leave out the open hi-hat thing if you're finding it too difficult or it's putting you off playing to the song. You could have just played for the previous section. And not worried about the open hi-hat if you wanted to. So eight bars of the groove in verse one, but then look at um, bar seven and, uh, well, bar seven, we get a crash symbol. And this is a, a recurring theme. Bar seven of each of these verses, we get a crash symbol, which if you listen to the melody, goes really well. It sort of it notifies a new section towards the last two bars of each verse. So it's just a crash symbol on beat one of uh, bar seven there. One, two, so look out for that. And uh, it comes later in the song as well. The next line, another eight bars, and just before bar seven this time, we get, if you look at bar six, we've got a little drag note. This is for the more intermediate drummer. So this is definitely something to not stress yourself over if you're a beginner. Just simply leave out this extra little note idea, but it's on the recording, so I'm wanting to include it. It's simply this. One, two, three, and four, one. I'm playing four and a one. Four and a one. In between the hi-hat, I'm just playing two little tap notes with my left hand. It's called a drag. It's written in brackets because it's supposed to be played quietly. Naturally, it's played quietly. It's just played with the one hand. And in this case, it's going into a crash cymbal. So again, create a two bar loop. Look at that feel. Don't worry about it too much. It's very low in the mix. If you listen carefully, you can hear it, but uh, uh, most people would, would have missed it. So don't worry if you can't play that drag technique, um, then just leave it out. But it's there on the recording, so there you go. So then the last bar of that verse, we get this repeating idea, this repeating drum fill. One and two and three and four and. And you can see underneath it, I've written the notation, the crescendo, meaning that from beat three, we get sort of naturally building up in volume. Also with the open hi-hat, which I haven't notated, it's up to you whether you want to do that with the hi-hat, but the hi-hat also sort of gradually opens over those, over those three eighth notes, three and four and, and then closes again or becomes half loose, or whatever you want to talk, however, however you want to uh, feel it uh, afterwards into the pre chorus. But we get sort of build up in volume with the snare drum and the hi hat. Again, a more intermediate idea. One, two, three, and four, and. So we get three and four, and, but the snare drum plays on and four, and. If you wanted to simplify this section, every time it's played, it's played a lot of the song, then you could play this instead. One and two and three and four and. I'm playing all three limbs there, floor tom, snare drum, three and four and one. Try to get that increase in volume though, I think it sounds good. One, two, three and four and. So I'm not playing super loud at the end, what I'm doing is I'm playing quiet at the beginning on beat three. One, two, three and four and. Three and four and one. But on the recording it's this. One, two, three and four. We don't get the first snare drum on beat three, as I just showed you with that variation. It's three and four and. But if you wanted to play as well, three and four and, absolutely fine. I might be wrong, I might have misheard the snare drum, but it's very quiet to sort of hear it on the and of three rather than beat three. So, another simplified version, you could play this. One, two, three and four and. and for most get the drummer sort of reading off the page, that would be much easier to play because you don't have to worry about coming in on the and of three, you're coming on beat three with the bass drum starts. That'll work just as well. I'll say that a lot in this lesson. But on the recording it's this, one, two, three, and four, and one. And we get this natural increase in volume with the open hi-hat as well. So for pre-chorus one, I've called it, we've got uh, another eight bars, starts with the crash cymbal, and then bar seven, we get this open hi-hat on beat four. One, two, three, and four. Fully open for the whole of the bar, for the whole of the beat, sorry. Four and one. 
So that's an interesting way of playing the open high hand. Instead of playing uh, four and, just four and one, and leaving the high hat to ring out for the whole of the beat. So we get that for bar seven into eight. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that line, we get the same drum fill as above. One, two, three, and four, and one. With all the variations I've talked about previously, you can apply your own ideas. So on to chorus one. Uh, eight bars of just groove. Uh, and then the second line of the chorus, we get this little section leading us into bridge two. Just two bars. One, two, three, and four. And then this bit. The important thing here is to get the crash symbols on one and the and of beat two. One and two and. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. Don't even worry about the drum fill afterwards, the and three, and four, and bit which I'm about to show you. The most important thing here is the da, da, going with those band stabs. They're kind of important crash symbols. So just simplifying it, those two bars, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, one. But on the recording, we get this for that second bar. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So we get the bass drum pumping, and three, and four, and, with the snare drum underneath it. Uh, and three, and four, and. It's basically the, the three, and four, and variation, but this time it does start on beat three. So again, last time I mentioned it, all those previous drum fills starting on the and of three, start them on beat three with the snare drum. You're finding it hard to work out where the and of three is. But this record, uh, this, this version, we do get it starting on beat three. One and two and three and four and. So you've got to come off the crash cymbal, off the and of two, back to the snare drum. Let's create a two bar loop. One, two, three and four. One and two and three and four and one. You could leave out the bass drum pumping underneath. You could go one, two, and three, and four, and. And not worry about the bass drum going underneath it if you wanted to. Just go to the floor tom and snare drum as we talked about previously. So then bridge two, we've got four more bars of groove, starting with the crash cymbal, and then our first sort of complicated drum fill, if you like, because um, we've got some fast notes coming up. We get this at the end of the line. One, two, three, and four, and a one. So it's the... Three and four and drum fill again. Three and four and. The hi-hat's going to open as well. But instead of and at the end of the bar, it's and one. It's two sixteenth notes. Starting where the and would be played, and one. But coming out into beat one. One, two, three, and four, and the one. One, two, three, and four, and the one. So get that rhythm. Dum, da, da, ba, ba, mm, ba, mm. Da, da, ba, ba, mm. Again, create a two bar loop. If you wanted to leave out those extra notes, you could just play three and four. And that same variation from earlier with all the variations we talked about. You could just leave out those extra notes if you wanted to, but again, it's on the recording, so I thought I'd include it, well, I wanted to include it. So, let me now play for you the second line of chorus one, those two bars, and then four bars of bridge two, up to speed. So on to page two and verse two, crash symbol at the beginning, the second line, four bars long. Uh, we've got a crash symbol starting on bar, uh, bar three. And then bar four is the uh, same old usual drum fill. One, two, and three, and four. And, except it starts with a bass drum on the end of two. So we're just coming in a little bit earlier with the bass drum. These extra notes can just be left out. We could just play three and four and, but on the recording it's one, two, and three, and four and. So a whole four eighth notes three and four and of build up into the next section which is pre-chorus two uh, look out for the crash symbol halfway through that line starting the next four bars and then bar seven has that crash symbol at the beginning as well and then bar eight is one two and three and four and 
<coughs> one, two, and three, and four. And exactly the same as the drum fill bar above it at the end of verse two. Chorus two, eight bars of groove there, nothing going on. Second line, four more bars, but we get a little open hi-hat at the end of that fourth bar. One, two, three, and four, and one, and one. So just opens on its own on the end of four, and closes on beat one of the next line, uh, in this case, into a crash cymbal. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. So <clears throat> you should be pretty comfortable playing open hi-hat stuff. If you're not, you could leave it out. No one's going to miss it, but it's there on the recording. So on it goes, next line. And <clears throat> we've got a crash at the beginning. And this is our first uh, really complicated drum fill that you could definitely leave out as a beginner. Uh, but it's cool if you want to have a go at it. The last bar there, we get this. One... Two, three, and a four, e and. So, we're playing three and, but after that and a three, I'm coming down with the left hand. Three, and a four, e and. A. My right hand is still playing one and two and three and four and. It's just one and two and three and four and. We get one and two and three and a four and a one. So it shouldn't feel different for your right hand. It's just your left hand's gonna come in between Three and a four, where it play four, we're playing four this time on the snare drum. A four, E, and a. Really the tricky bit is, is coming in on the a uh of beat three, just before beat four. You could simplify this drum fill by playing one, two, three, and four, E, and a. One, two, three, and four, E, and a. Just play, playing four sixteenth notes, right, left, right, left. But Gary comes in a little bit earlier, and also underneath it, the bass drum is playing three and four and. And that comes later in the song as well, where we get this uh, bass drum continuing the pulse underneath. One, two, three, and a four, e and a one, two, three, and a four, e and a one. So I can't really simplify that anymore, other than just say, leave out if you wanted to, or play four, e and a. So look, a four, e and a, play one, two, and then come down with the right hand to start the snare drum drum fill. But on the recording, into a crash on the next line. So, at the end of that fourth bar, we get an extra bass drum note. Now, I'm sure there's been extra bass drum notes earlier in the song. I'm not sure. I'm just, uh, I'd be surprised if I, if, I, if I got them all. But there's um, uh, more obvious sections where you definitely hear extra bass drums being played. This is the first time I sort of hear it, um, uh, other than the and of beat two leading into a drum fill. Anyway, we get bar four there at the end of that line, that fourth line. One, two, three, and four, and one. So, and one, going into the next bar. One, two, three, and four, and one. If you accidentally miss that, no one's gonna miss it. But uh, there, it's still on the recording, as I keep saying. So the next line, last, uh, second to last line, we get two crash cymbals. One and two ands. So with the bass drum and then also with the snare and crash, don't feel the need to come back to the hi-hat. You could play one and two and three and four if you wanted to. If you've got one crash, fine. One, two, three, four. But on the recording it's one, two, three and four and. So we're basically playing one, two, three and four, but underneath, over the top of it, one and two, uh, one and two, and three and four. We've got those two crash symbols coming out. Now the next part, another little advanced idea this. One, two, three, and four, and a one. So before we had the a uh, four E and a, where if the left hand starts in between the right hands, it's the very last two eighth notes before going into the next bar, and a one, right left crash. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and a one. Two, three, four, and a one. It just slips in between those hi-hats and the crash. Again, leave it out if you want to. Then, 
I've written here for the third bar after that crash cymbal, note the hi-hat becomes loose for the rest of the song. So, as I said previously, the hi-hat's kind of loose-ish for the first part of the song, but now it's sort of, now you sort of get the impression that the hi-hat's slowly opening over the entire song, which is quite cool, but at this part, um, it's, it's, you, you, you hear a very definite difference where it sort of becomes more fully open. So um, you want to sort of start having the hi-hat being open uh, from bar three here, but you don't really want to play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, where it's gone from very close to very open. Um, you probably want to sort of build it up at, at the opening a little bit before this, but on the recording, like I said, it's, it's, it's very obvious that bar three there is, is the fully open bar. Um, not much I can say about it. It's, it's sort of an intermediate thing to be able to control the hi-hat. Um, so if you want to just keep it closed throughout this section as well, or just have the hi-hat half open for the entire song. So when you get to this part, there's nothing to do. But like I said, on the recording, you sort of hear this, this more obvious uh, opening of the hi-hat occurring. The last bar of that line, we get one, two, and three, and four, and. So three, and four, and. One, two, and three, and four, and. Two, and three, and four, and. Just follow with the right hand. Next line, extra bass drum notes going on. One, two, three, and four, and one, I'm hearing. And again for the next bar, one, two, three, and four, and one, into a crash cymbal. Now the last bar on that line is, is, the, is the big doozy for, for a beginner drummer, the big drum fill. Um, and this is definitely an advanced idea because of the, uh, what well, we're about to see, because of some snare drum notes that have been missed out on beat three. We get this leading up to it, one and two, so bass on one and two, one and two, we're then going to come down to the snare drum, and uh, and I'm going to show you how he plays on the recording, then we can talk about simplifying it. And uh, three, E, and. That's the tricky bit there. The bass drum starts pumping from beat three, three and four and. So the bass drum fills in that gap, the snare drum left. That's quite hard to play in time uh, if, if, if you're a new drummer. One and two and a three e and I'm using the sticking right left left right, so I'm playing and a three e and and then the drum fill ends with four e and a up to one of your rack toms four e and a but remember the bass drum is pumping underneath it still four e and a one once you get used to this idea of playing drum fills with the bass drum pumping underneath. It's not so hard, it's not so tricky, um, once you sort of get used to it. Uh, it's just reading it off the page initially, it might, it might seem rather confusing. One and two and a three and four e and a one. So that is a tricky drum fill to read off the page. Um, so you could play one and two and a three and four e and a. I'm just, I just filled in the gap with the snare drum and a three e and I played beat three with the snare drum as well. E and a. So uh, what, uh, let, me, let me just play it a few more times correctly and then, then I'll show you some simplified versions again up to speed. One and two and a three e and four e and a one. Create a two bar loop. One, two, three, four. One and two and a three e and four e and a one. So simplified version. Leave out the bass drum, fill in the gap with the snare drum on beat three. Um, you could do that instead. If you wanted to. But now let me play for you those two lines up to speed as the recording uh, uh, shows us. Here we go.
So onto the last page, the outro, and it's really just uh, some extra bass drum notes going on here. So uh, the first line, we get, we get the four and at the end of that fourth bar. One, two, three, and four and. The next line, we get some extra bass drums occurring on beat one, or on the and of beat one in this case. We get one and two and. So it's the same idea as before, one, uh, sorry, one, two, but this time it's one and, an extra bass drum note. Again, leave out those extra bass drum notes. If you, if, you've, if, if you miss them, no one's gonna notice. It's just on the recording, there it is. One and two and three and four. Next bar uh, has the extra bass drum on the and of four. One, two, three and four and one. Bar four has one and two, three and four. So sort of improvising with the bass drum as the song starts to fade out. That third line has one and two, three and four at the beginning. Crash symbol on bar three, look out for that. Bar four, one, two, three, and four, and one. And then when it really starts to fade out, the last line, this is a classic idea that drummers do on recordings. As the song starts to fade out, they usually throw in a few fancier drum fills as the song starts to fade out. Um, and so we get this, this cool drum fill at the end, of the end of the line here, but the first two bars, one, two, three, four, Bar two has that snare drum on the uh of beat four. One, two, three, four, one, which we talked about. And then uh, the extra bass drum note on the end of fourth of bar three. And bar four has this before it fully fades out. One and two and three and a four. And it's the ander there that makes it a little bit trickier. But we're play basically playing one and two and three and four and up with the extra bass drum notes. And three, four, one, two, three, and a four, and one, and two, and three, and a four, and. So um, let me now play for you. And uh, by the way, if you want to simplify that, just play. Or from the intro as well. Uh, or anyway, it doesn't really matter because the song's faded out at this point. If you're playing along to your, uh, playing along to the song in, in, in your bedroom or, uh, with your mates, then uh, you can work out how you want to end it. Uh, but let me just uh, show you how those uh, last four lines sound like up to speed. Here we go. So I hope that made sense, and I also hope that uh, some of the more intermediate advanced ideas uh, didn't put you guys off, the beginner, beginner drummers, the new drummers, from playing along to this song. It's a really good song for beginners. It teaches you uh, timing uh, and um, some really nice little drum fills as well that aren't too complicated, but are sort of the meat and potatoes of drumming that you know every, every popular song um, tends to have these sort of drum fills going on, these build-ups and these little snare drum parts, um, and they're all very useful to learn. Don't forget to download all three pages of the PDF again from my website for free. And then while you're at my website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's over 500 full song lessons now uh, where I teach you the song, just like this lesson, from start to finish, every single bar. And I've got over 500, as I say, famous and popular video song lessons up on the website already. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, Toodle pip and happy drumming to you.